welcome. My name is Colleen Tauke and I'm a sewing specialist at Fonz & Porter. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to put together the pieces for the table runner called Running It in Circles. For our pattern for this, you can visit our website. Okay, we're going to be using 10 inch pre-cut squares. And the, the fun part of this is that when you're finished with it, you don't have to go back and quilt it. It's quilt as you go. So first we're going to start with a 10 inch circle. And we're going to take our template set comes, it's called a peekaboo template, comes as a circle and as a square like this. The first piece we're going to use is the circle. I'll lay that on your 10 inch square. And you're going to trace all the way around the outside. This is going to become your stitching line, putting pieces together. And then you'll note that there is a small slot cut in the, the acrylic template. And that little slot is going to allow us to turn the fabrics later. So what we're going to do is just cut a little slit right through the fabric. Now make sure that you don't have two fabrics matched up together yet at this point. Just one layer is all you need to have that slot cut through. Now right sides together we're going to make our first circle is going to be out of a turquoise and a rose color. So we're going to put these together like this. And I talked about that being our stitching line. So as I bring this one in, we're going to I'm going to show you what the stitching line looks like. There's one other piece added, but in just a minute, we can just follow our stitching line. You want to um, set your stitch length just a little bit shorter on your sewing machine because this is going to be a curve and we're going to put some stress on it when we turn it right side out. So you want to shorten the stitch length just a little. The other thing we're going to be using is the square part of our template. And you're going to take a piece of batting at this point and you're going to cut a square to go in to each of these circles. So we have three by five, so you need 15 squares of batting. And then in order to get the batting to stay in place, we're going to just use a little bit of glue stick. The fun that you used to have in kindergarten, getting to glue. So we're just going to adhere a little bit of glue stick and you'll notice my placement the corners reach out to my stitching lines and I've left that slit at the top open and not covered by um, any of the batting. Now we're going to take a scissors and we're going to trim a seam allowance. You'll see here I've left it at about an eighth of an inch all the way around. Now because you've shortened your stitch length secured your seam or well, you can trim this down to an eighth of an inch and it won't ravel. Okay, now we have the batting in place, got that little space for us to turn. So very gently, work your thumb into the, ins into the fabric and gently, just like turning a pillowcase, because we've trimmed our seam allowances really short, now you don't want to nick your seam allowance, but you do want to get really close. You can go in with your thumb like this. And the seam allowance starts to take on a curve that you're trying to create. Then take it to the ironing surface and you can work out the rest of that seam allowance with your fingertips, just like that. And you work your way all the way around. So, if I were making this at home, I would sit down and stitch all of my circles, trim them all, and then sit down and pop them all right side out. So you're making this nice curve along the outer edge. And as if I finished by magic, we have one all finished and ready to go. At this point, now we take it back to our cutting table. We're not going to be cutting right now. We're actually going to be using the square acrylic template one more time. And if you look for the placement of the slit that where you turned everything right side out, you want to line up again. The batting was right underneath and it was aligned with that cut. So we're going to put a real light pencil line. This is going to be a stitching line this time on all four sides. Use your favorite marking tool, sometimes a... Oh, I didn't get quite dark enough here. 
I like to just lay in a, just, a line just, just dark enough to pick up at my sewing machine. Okay. Now, we need to join these together to make it look like that. So, I have two already joined, so you'll understand where we're headed. You see, there's a completed circle. Here's another completed circle. And they're joined together along that mark, that square marked line. So we're going to pretend we're joining the third one on here. And it's going to go right here. Now, when I'm going to be lining these up, I'll take them in the right positions. I'll drop a pin through and check for my line on the back. Now the position of the turning slot that you made is going to be important because as it opens up, here's your cut there and there's a cut in this one, these are going to be hidden inside when we're finished. So we can take these to the sewing machine and it's just follow the line straight across. You may want to take just a little bit of a reinforcement stitch as you begin and then work your way along your stitching line that you drew in for yourself. And since this is part of the actual finished assembly, again, you'll want to just do a little secure stitch on the other end. Take it out of the machine. And you'll see then we're going to open these up just like that. And you can press those. They lay pretty good. So now we can think about, now we have to add rows together. We would add um, five, uh, it's three by five, so three, one direction, five the other. And as we join rows, again, you're going to want to make sure that you join just like this, just like we did before, except it's in multiples now. You would add more and you'd have a third there. When you get done, all these seams pressed open You'll see, and all along the outer edge, they get pressed in, like here. Our instructions will tell you, either use a decorative zigzag stitch, a blanket stitch. You could even hand applique stitch these down if you don't want to see your stitching lines. For more of our video tutorials, visit our website. Thanks for joining me today.